Hey there, I'm professional psychic Karen Marie, and this is Psyched Up Sundays for January 22nd, 2023. I'll be talking about the transits for the week in this video. I'm posting separate videos for each sign where I'll draw a three card draw. Once I get those all uploaded, I will post the links to those below. Also, please check out my daily one minute videos that I post here on this channel, as well as on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. I've got the links to my social media sites below. On the dailies, I talk about the highlighted transits for the day and I draw a card. So it's a quick, easy way to just be tuned in and in touch with what's going on in the skies. If you wanna take advantage of my half price special to celebrate 35 years as a professional psychic, I have been offering half price off my private sessions, which I do over Zoom or the telephone. So my normal rates are $300 an hour. So this month, if you contact me soon, you can get an hour reading for $150. Um, the links to my website and email are below. So reach out to me if you want to take advantage of my half price special. Okay. Let's jump in. So let's talk about what's been going on. We had Mercury turn direct this last week. Hallelujah. Mars turned direct the week before. These still aren't moving up to speed yet, and they're still both in their shadow periods, which means they're still going back over and they haven't gotten back up to the points where they stationed retrograde. Uh, Mercury will get out of its shadow on February 7th. Mars will get out of its shadow in the middle of March. So we could still feel the lingering effects of Mercury and Mars retrograde for the foreseeable future. But we are at least moving forward. And today, Uranus stationed direct. So this is the Great Awakener, the ruler of Aquarius which now the sun and the moon are in. We have a new moon in Aquarius. That's when the sun and moon are together in the skies. This happened yesterday, Saturday. So this is a new beginning with this new innovative sign because Aquarius likes to do things outside the box. As the sun moves through the Aquarius sign, it's like a big, huge spotlight that shines a light on the Aquarian themes. Wherever you have Aquarius ruling your chart is where you can feel this extra spotlight in your life. Last week on the individual readings, I talked about the new moon for each sign. So if you want to go back and find out how that can personally affect you by sign, go back and check out last week's individual readings for those. I'm not going to go into those this week. So, um, so the themes for Aquarius. Aquarius rules the 11th house in the astrological wheel. This is the house of networks, groups, our social circles. When we connect with others and there's more than one, one-on-one -on -one connections is the seventh house. 11th house is the house that Aquarius rules. Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, sudden, unexpected, Curveballs, Great Awakener, Uranus, and Aquarians like to do things outside the box. They like the unique, the different. They're the rebels, the revolutionaries. They're the ones that have the courage to do things that other people are afraid to do. They also like to change things up and they get bored easily. They also can think they know it all. It's a fixed sign, so once they fix their mind on something, you can't really change it. Um, it's also Aquarius rules our hopes, our dreams, our wishes, so we can get extra excited about what we want for our lives as the sun highlights this Aquarius energy. Um, again, it will also highlight our social circles, our networks, our groups of people. It will be able to see, like, is are these my people? Is this my tribe? It also highlights creative expression, so you may feel extra creative as planets move through Aquarius. There are other two other important transits that happened today. Um, Venus was conjunct Saturn in Aquarius. So Venus is love, relationships, money, and finances. Saturn is how we structure things, how we form things. It brings rewards for hard work. Saturn can be like the teacher with the ruler. It could also like, nope, don't go there. It can set up boundaries and 
No. So in the realm of relationships and finances, Saturn wants us to see the truth. So truths can be revealed or could have been revealed today. And again, for all transits, we can feel them ahead of time. We can feel them afterwards. So I'll talk about when transits are exact, but you may feel these effects before or after, uh, as well as the day that they're happening. So that was happening today. We also had Juno conjunct Jupiter today. Now Juno is the good wife. It's an asteroid. It's one of the biggest asteroids. It represents committed relationships. So Jupiter brings good luck and gifts and makes things bigger, positive and negative. So it makes bigger, highlights committed relationships today with the Juno-Jupiter conjunction. So it can shine the light on committed relationships that are really good or relationships that are headed towards commitment. You could get a huge affirmation or a spotlight on those. You could also get highlighted committed relationships that aren't working so well. It, Jupiter can blow up or make bigger the negative aspects in a committed relationship as well. So different people could have different insights around relationships and Uranus that's stationed direct today is in Taurus, which is ruled by Venus. So we could also have big earth shaking reveals in relationships as a result of Uranus stationing direct. So that could also be highlighted. So Uranus direct, Jupiter conjunct Juno, and Venus conjunct Saturn were all happening today. So definitely big day astrologically. As we move forward this week, Venus uh, will continue moving through Aquarius. The moon will move into Pisces tomorrow, Monday morning at 11.35 a.m. Austin, Texas time. I always give Austin times. That's where I am. It's central time zone in the United States, but make allowances for whatever time zone you may be in. So as the moon moves into Pisces, it's can be really at home here. It's a softening of the energies. Pisces is two fish. One fish is swimming with spiritual psychic things. It's easy to get psychic intuition, spiritual ahas and realizations. The other fish is swimming the other direction and is caught up in illusion, delusion, addiction, fuzzy thinking. So the moon in Pisces could highlight both of these depending on where you are. If you are spiritually fit, if you're plugging in spiritually, you can really have these amazing spiritual downloads, psychic reveals, psychic intuition could be super strong. Emotions can be super strong. The moon represents our emotional body, our intuition. So in Pisces, it heightens these things. Also, if you are caught up in addictive patterns or you can't see clearly or you're fuzzy or you just want to be checked out, the moon could exaggerate that as well. So just know that. On Tuesday, the biggest transit I have for the day is at 7.30 p.m. The sun in Aquarius will sextile Jupiter in Aries. Um, that happens at four degrees and 48 minutes. So Jupiter expands things, brings gifts. Good luck. A sextile is a positive connection. So the sun, and if you have planets or points in or around this four degree, four to five degrees, it really, you know, from one to eight degrees of Aquarius or Aries, if you have personal points or planets in this Realm, you may feel a personal kiss um, with this energy Tuesday night. Like you may feel validated, highlighted, have gifts come in, just feel good about yourself with this really beautiful transit. And it will be, we'll feel that all day because it's the sun and it doesn't move as quickly, but that gets highlighted. Um, the moon moving through Pisces makes a number of different um, since the move moves through quickly, it usually takes two and a half days to move through a sign. So it, it has lots of different aspects with the different planets as it moves through. So again, check out my dailies if you want to know what's happening with the moon each day. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail 
on this video about that because I've heard from you guys that your eyes can start crossing with too much of this transiting information. Those of you that are astrology nerds like me, maybe soaking it up for the average person, they start checking out if I give too much information. So I'm trying to keep these videos more simple and straightforward for everyone. But I will say that Wednesday morning early, like 1.42 a.m. Austin, Texas time, so Tuesday night while you're sleeping, the moon in Pisces will be conjunct Neptune in Pisces. This will happen at 23 degrees and 24 minutes. These are the two most intuitive psychic planets together. So dreams could be super vivid that night. Also, psychic downloads, spiritual connections. And again, even with them close to each other during the day before and after this, it can be a highlighted psychic spiritual time. So just know it's a great week to have downloads. It's a great time to go to sleep with the intention to remember your dreams. You can say, I'm going to remember my dreams tonight. You wake up during the night or first thing in the morning, jotting down what you do remember. If you do that every day, it becomes easier and easier to remember your dreams. So it's a great exercise to do. I first found out I was psychic when I was a child because I had prophetic dreams that came true. So dreams can be where your psychic abilities first show up. On Wednesday the 25th at 12.47 p.m., the moon will move into Aries. So as the moon moves through a sign, it highlights the energies of that sign, like I said. And Aries, on the downside, is impulsivity. It's rash emotional outbursts. It's being impulsive and childlike in a way that's childish. The positives of Aries is lots of passion, lots of inspiration, and, and fulfilling childhood dreams is one way that that can be highlighted. I have seen consistently, however, Mars is the ruler of Aries. When the moon moves through Aries, people with unresolved anger issues can be extra volatile. So pay attention to that in your world. Do you see that happening in the world around you? Again, that'll happen just after noon on Wednesday. The moon moves into Aries. It'll be into Aries a couple days. Um, so see if you notice that. Also on Wednesday, the moon in Aries will be conjunct Jupiter at 9.18 p.m. So that evening, this is a sweet kiss because it'll highlight the energy of Jupiter. Jupiter brings gifts. It makes things bigger. It can highlight your passions. It can highlight inspiration. Um, it can highlight gifts coming in, especially if you have planets or points, again, around these degree points. It happens at four degrees and 59 minutes of Aries, so it's almost five degrees of Aries. So if you have planets or points around these degree points, you could feel an extra special kiss from the universe Wednesday evening. And then at 10.58 p.m. Wednesday evening, the moon in Aries will sextile the sun. Of course, this happens briefly, um, but it is another little kiss um, and a way to connect and vibe with others. It may be a really great night to connect with other people and have positive, feel like you're hanging out with your tribe Wednesday night. Thursday, the sun in Aquarius will sextile Juno in Aries. So again, there's another highlight around this committed relationship issue. The sun will highlight. It's a positive connection. So we had that highlighting spotlight today with Jupiter and Juno together. And then we'll be having it with the sun in a positive relationship with it too. So again, if you have questions around relationships that you're in, committed relationships, or whether or not to be in a committed relationship with someone, like should I commit to this person? I feel like you'll get some insights this week uh, if you haven't already gotten them today about whether that's a positive for your life or, or not. Um, then 8.32 p.m. Thursday evening, Venus moves into Pisces. Now Venus is at home in Pisces. This is a nice shift, a beautiful energy. It really will highlight your psychic abilities, dreams, creative projects. This will be a sweet energy as Venus is very much at home in Pisces. So that energy happens Thursday evening. You may feel that shift and you may feel inspired to be creative. 
inspired to write a love note or love letter like the Thursday night energy is really positive for spiritual connections in relationships too, like taking relationships to that higher level um, as Pisces can do. All right, on Friday, we have Mercury in a square with Chiron. Mercury will be at 12 degrees and 29 minutes of Capricorn and Chiron will be at that same degree point in Aries. So a square can be a contentious relationship. So this happens at 4.42 a.m. So it's before we're awake, most of us, on Friday morning. But we could have this ouch. It could be lingering throughout the day where we get triggered. Mercury is about our communications or our thinking. So we could have like negative thinking that's causing us pain be highlighted or if someone is gaslighting or saying negative things to us this could be highlighted again probably not at that hour but maybe throughout that day or maybe experiencing that on Thursday so just know that the universe is trying to show you this week whether relationships are positive or negative for you is what I'm sensing with all these Juno and the Venus energies as relationships are super highlighted and also Uranus turning direct in Taurus which is ruled by Venus there's a lot of activation and insights coming down this week around your relationships um, also uh, at 3 1 p.m. on Friday the moon in Aries will square Pluto in Capricorn. So Pluto is about death and transformation, power and control. Again, the moon in Aries can be volatile. This square contentious relationship between Aries that's ruled by Mars, the god of war, and Pluto that's about death and transformation could be intensive. So Friday afternoon could have sparks flying out in the world, in your life. So watch out for that. And especially as the moon moves through the last couple degrees of Aries. It can be intensive. Wrapping things up. January 6th, 2021 happened when Mars was at the last degree point of Aries. So things could be triggered and highlighted. At 5.42 p.m. the moon moves into Taurus. We should feel that shift from the fiery fireball of Aries energy into the grounded energy of Taurus ruled by Venus. So very Venusian energy, really lovely. And then the moon in Taurus will sextile Venus in Pisces just before 8 p.m. on Friday night. So this could be like a really sweet kiss. It could be a volatile afternoon intensive, but it feels like the evening feels really lovely. On Saturday, we have the sun in Aquarius in a square with the north node in Taurus. So the north node in Taurus, the north node has been moving through Taurus since January of last year. The north node is where we're collectively learning. It's like we're all in class learning about the Taurus themes. Again, ruled by Venus, so we're learning about relationships, love, self-love, valuing ourselves. Do the relationships in our lives value us or the people in our lives value us? Do we feel valued or not? Like in this last year and up until July of this year, when the nodes will shift into Aries and Libra, we will be having this theme of highlighting relationships and whether or not the people in our lives are our tribe or not. That's one way I would interpret it that. So the square, though, can be contentious relationship. Again, you could see where you're not being valued. You could also see where you're not handling your money correctly or you're not taking good care of yourself um, with that square. Um, the moon that evening in Taurus will have a trine with Mercury, which is some great insights. And then it'll have a conjunction with Uranus, which could highlight the unexpected things that could Uranus can bring. Again, Uranus is the great awakener, sudden unexpected, but it could bring some benefits in. This is Saturday evening. Then on Sunday, we have two powerful trines. At 7.45 p.m., this is Sunday the 29th, the sun in Aquarius will be in a trine with Mars, which is going forward, even if it's slowly, in Gemini, so we can get some great insights, trines or positive connections, into how to be moving forward or get the go light or like the, the green flag 
of like it's time to go time to move forward insights into how we're moving forward in our life great time to launch things or have new beginnings in terms of where we're putting our energies in our lives being highlighted there's also a trine between mercury and capricorn and uranus and taurus uranus is the upper octave of mercury so mercury represents our thoughts our communications our technology our transportation Uranus is the upper octave of this. It's higher technology. It's AI. It's robotics. It's connections with extraterrestrials. If Mercury rules transportation on the ground, Uranus rules air travel, right? And like the higher technology. So there's a beautiful trine happening between these two planets that are basis, basically extensions of each, of each other. So there can be really fabulous conversations happening, really great insights inspired innovative things especially if like you're an engineer or someone who works on ai artificial intelligence computers technology you could get some incredible insights downloaded inspired ideas or again with the sun training mars have something you've been working on finally click into place and get launched those are the major transits as I see it this week. Again, make sure you check out the dailies for the daily dose of what's important for the day. Contact me if you want to take advantage of my half price reading schedule special that will be ending at the end of January. Have a beautiful week. Peace.